we were talking about advertising yeah. breaking limits in a uh, environment lacking uh, stringent codes of conduct codes of ethics yeah, I think your starting point itself is wrong, or at least, uh, to say the least, biased. Because I think your basic assumption uh, that you're starting with is that it is a loosely controlled environment. Now, let me tell you that there's nothing further from the truth. Because something like 70 or 80 percent of the advertising that you see, or that is produced in this country, is produced by a handful of agencies, may say maybe about 20 or 25. Now, these uh, agencies, now I'm, I'm saying that by and large, the any uh, large or responsible agency will not, um, uh, you know, function in an irresponsible manner. In fact, uh, not only is there a self-imposed uh, ethical kind of uh, discipline that is uh, employed by these agencies, but I think at the end of the day, this whole business of advertising is to do with creating a long-term relationship with a consumer. Now, um, if that is what you want to build, then it's not simply good enough to just go and con somebody out of a single sale. But if the long-term objective is to build an ongoing relationship, then I think the, that relationship has to be based on certain values, uh, like dependability, truth, honesty, and so on, apart from giving value for money. So I think if you look at advertising in that context, I think uh, uh, we are not in the business of uh, short-term benefits, but in, on long, long-term relationships. The, the other thing that I want to say is that there are certain other things that the industry has, apart from the self, uh, uh, sorry, I'll, let me start this again. I would also like to say that there is something called ASCII, for example, which is the Advertising Council's uh, Standards Council of India, uh, or ASCII, which uh, is a body with teeth. It's not just sort of a bunch of nice guys who are just sitting around doing nothing. But this is a body that takes any objections, which can be raised by anyone at all, whether it be a consumer, a consumer body, or uh, a, a competitor, or whatever. And any uh, objection that is raised to anything that is uh, um, objectionable, uh, to put it mildly, can be raised with this particular body, and they will take action. Is body <coughs> Again, I think I, I, I don't believe that any uh, self-respecting advertising agency would uh, uh, just sort of uh, use titillation just to um, sell any old product. But I think there are certain categories I, th I, I would imagine that things like if you're selling condoms, if you're selling underwear, then I think titillation then becomes very much an integral part of what the, what the, uh, the, the product itself is all about. So I think in such situations, I think titillation is necessary. But there is, again, I think a great deal, a deal of self-restraint, I think, that is required. Because how far do you go? I mean, uh, while if, you, if, you, if it's necessary to titillate people, then how far do you go without actually breaking the bounds of um, decency? And uh, I don't. Uh, there was a time, rather. There was a time. I think in the in the old days, uh, even when you're selling car tires, you put a girl in a swimsuit next to it. Uh, I think that was a silly thing to do, and I think people realized that it was not going to sell too many car tires. So all that has stopped now. It really doesn't make business sense to just use titillation for the sake of titillation because it's not going to move. Uh, any product. Because I think the general belief is that you know, if you put a pretty girl in a picture, it's a, it helps to move product. But the consumer is much smarter now, you know, and I think that uh, it's a bad decision. Uh, it's a bad business decision uh, just to titillate people for the sake of titillation. Uh, do you think it's fair for advertisers to target or look at children as a particular consumer group and focus <coughs> advertising on them, especially because this is a body of uh, people who are not really uh, mature enough. Right? Mm -hmm. Children have become an enormous, uh, it's an enormous uh, segment. Uh, if you look at the population uh, uh, profile of this country, you'll find that a huge number of, uh, of a huge percentage of the population are young people. 
Um, consequently, I think you've had a proliferation of children's products. Um, and while I think legitimately, I think any advertiser or manufacturer will, will see this huge mass of uh, children in this country and create products for them. But uh, frankly, I can't think of a single uh, product uh, that, uh, that I feel is uh, mm. forcing uh, children to buy it, uh, and it's, which is something that is not needed by them. Uh, I think it's also true that children have more money than they've had any time uh, previously. But um, I don't believe that um, advertising alone can help to sell a product which is really not needed, either, um, uh, you know, either that it, it does not satisfy a psychological or a physical need. And I can't think of a single example where this is happening. Do you think Indian hands are becoming uh, mere clones of Western models? This was also true. I think some up to some time ago. In fact, I've said this myself that I think uh, many on, on many occasions uh, that we don't have uh, Indian characters in Indian advertising, and I think that's partly because many of our creative people in this country, uh, I think uh, their bodies are here, but their brains are in New York or London, uh, and I think they they uh, they they see the <laughs> the uh, Indian audience as an international audience, if you like. Now, this is also true that I think there are certain product categories which are international. Uh, you have the obvious uh, things like Coca-Cola and, and so on. On the one hand, you have cars and things on the other hand. So I think there is, there is uh, some reason to believe that um, this internationalization of, uh, uh, of characters is, I think, is something that we have to live with. At the same time, I think what you will find is um, of uh, late over the last year or two, there are many Indian characters which uh, which are uh, being shown in uh, Indian advertising. I think some of the things that come to mind is the Kit Kat commercial. You know, there is this uh, lovely Rajasthani gentleman with the moustache and the camel. Uh, there is Udham Singh, which uh, which is uh, used by Britannia. Now these are very very Indian characters, and I think this is a very welcome uh, um, initiative that has uh, come in, and I think. Basically, what I feel is I think Indian advertising is coming into its own and is beginning to find its own idiom and is beginning to uh, develop its own character. Back to your third question about, uh, about children. The truth is also that children, um, I think, uh, let me start again. Um, we tend to forget that children have also have parents, and I think responsible parents will see that children don't end up spending money in irresponsible ways. And I think this really um, has a lot to do with how children are brought up at home and what kind of values are taught them. Um, so this business of uh, you know, advertising actually prompting children to spend money on unnecessary things, I think is a bit of an um, exaggeration, frankly. At one time, why was there this tendency to copy advertising as in Copy or short taking, filmmaking, styles from uh, Western uh, advertising? There are two aspects to advertising, I think. One is the idea part, and one is the execution. That are the two sides of the same coin. Now, the execution part, which is really to do with the technology and the technique of how advertising is created, I think we have a lot to learn from the West, because these are people who have been in this business for a much longer time. And I think what is copied, uh, basically, are the techniques uh, and the technology, if you like. Uh, you know, the way you edit a film, for example, or the way certain shots are taken, lighting, you know, all, all these sort of uh, technical aspects of the thing. Now, if you start uh, copying the West in terms of ideas, then that's really not a very smart thing to do again, because those ideas may not be very relevant uh, to, to Indians or to, uh, to Indian uh, values or Indian society. Now, if you just uh, copy Western ideas, but you're going to end up with advertising. No, it's too much electronics. Sorry? The umbrella. Yes, a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You'll ask the question to me. Yeah. No, no, OK. So I mean, I can continue from where I was. Uh, Please say no. Yeah, OK. No. Yeah, this all right. OK. Yes, sir. Yeah, we were talking about uh, taking the waste. Yeah, we yeah so I, I talked about the uh, copying of the uh, techniques and all that. But if you start uh, copying ideas 
Well, now that's not a very smart thing to do, because Western ideas may be completely irrelevant to Indians and Indian consumers and to Indian values and uh, Indian uh, society. Now, if you use uh, that, then you're probably going to end up with advertising that is not very relevant. And if it's not relevant, then it's just so much money out of the window. Do Indian ads reflect the changing character of society? You think this is all dream, we know reality? No, um, advertising, as is well known, advertising is a reflection of society. Uh, and I think uh, looking at the advertising of any country, I think it give you a pretty good idea of how, what that country is all about and what the values, values are and all that kind of thing. Um, do, uh, does Indian advertising uh, reflect that? Absolutely. Uh, because if you want to be relevant uh, to the consumer, if advertising has to be relevant to the consumer and meaningful, then I think the consumer has to either respond to it on two levels. Either the consumer sees himself or herself in the advertising and say, yes, I can be that person. Or it can be aspirational for the consumer in, the, in terms of, yes, I'd like to be that person. Now, unless advertising reflects uh, society and what is happening in society, I think it is not possible to achieve either of these two things. Um, I'd like to give an example of Femina, which is the magazine, which is uh, an, a campaign that was created by this agency. Um, now, there again, I think, the, the woman of substance, uh, I think, is, uh, is the, one of the finest examples of how Indian advertising uh, reflects the Indian woman and how the Indian woman has moved uh, from the domesticated um, woman who was stayed at home and looked after the children in the kitchen to a, a woman who has taken, who is more and more taking control of her own life. Um, and of her, of her future. And, and she has a say in what happens in the home. She has a say in what happens to her children uh, and, uh, and in, the, in, the, in the life of the family. She's involved in the decision-making process, in the purchase of any expensive item, and so on. Um, this also reflects the, uh, the single woman who is now uh, a working person, uh, or a married woman who's also a working person. And I think Femina is a wonderful example, the Femina advertising, at least. Um, is a wonderful example of how it's keeping keeping track uh, of this new emerging Indian woman. Uh, it is also, yeah, uh, it is also a reflection of the product. I mean, uh, you know, because that's what really the magazine is about. Femina again reflects the changing Indian woman, and the advertising reflects that. So I think it's it's one of the finest examples that I can give you. Do advertisers confirm to norms like safety and statutory warnings, uh, especially looking at the example of uh, the thumbs up ads? Are those advertisers <coughs> liable to pay damages to the aggrieved party? Yeah, I'm not, I don't know about the legal aspects of it, but let me, let me tell you one thing. I think the starting point is that no respectable advertising agency, and I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of all my uh, colleagues here, uh, that uh, uh, that no um, respectable agency or no large agency would ever uh, like to put anybody's life at risk or do something irresponsible which would harm uh, physically, mentally, or emotionally any individual or any human being, leave alone a child. Uh, I think the thumbs up commercial was done in, in good faith it was grossly exaggerated, that whole situation of the person jumping from the cliff to pick up a bottle, uh, the, the bungee jumping film that you're talking about. And uh, it is very unfortunate that it ended up uh, with an accident. But um, I think it is uh, just a very, very rare occasion. I don't think that it was meant to be that. Uh, it is very unfortunate that the accident happened. Uh, but by and large, I think you will find that the agencies are extremely wary and careful about how they tread, and they wouldn't uh, do anything uh, that would, uh, you know, um, harm any person at all. Do advertisers like to do more and more? No, the other, the other thing, I think the other point is that um, it's not just the letter of the law, and I think it's the spirit of the law that one has to follow. Uh, it is possible to follow the letter of the law and still break the rules. But I think what we are more interested in is really following the spirit of the law and 
And I think that's really what the whole this is all about because we're not trying to sort of put a small print somewhere and uh, and you know and trying to sort of mislead people into believing something something different. Um, and uh, I would I would imagine that that's how most agencies would approach the problem. Do you see a tendency for advertisers to uh, create copy of some more outrageous than that? <coughs> I wouldn't choose the word outrageous, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, you see, people, uh, you know, aren't just waiting out there, just waiting to see your next ad or your next film. People, you know, people have much better things to do with their lives than to sit, you know, uh, and and uh, wa watch advertising. Um, they don't buy newspaper to read ads, and they don't watch television to read, uh, you know, to, to see ab advertising either. So the basic thing is that advertising has to interest people. It has to uh, wean them away. It has to attract them to itself. And therefore, um, it has to have a very powerful attention-getting device in it. Now, if, the, if, if you don't manage to attract the attention, then you're certainly not going to be able to get them to read the ad or hear the rest of the commercial. And, uh, and so therefore, sale is not possible either. The, I think more and more the tendency is to entertain people, I think. Um, uh, television certainly is an entertainment medium. And I think any television commercial that doesn't entertain people is not likely to be watched at all. And particularly when you imagine, think that a commercial has to be seen over and over and over again. So there has to be something um, in it so that people will, would like to watch it. Um, over and over again. The, t uh, the television watching habit, as we all know, is that when people just sit there with the zapper, you know, with the, <coughs> pardon me, with the remote control. And if you see an ad that you don't want to see, all you do is just zap the commercial and just get onto the next channel. So I don't think the idea is to be outrageous. I think the idea is to be, uh, the idea is to be interesting. <coughs> Well, the norms are what we would like to do ourselves, and I think keeping um, in mind uh, there are certain, for example, certain statutory norms relating to the advertising of cigarettes and alcohol. There are very, very stringent laws, and I think the the uh, the thing to do here is really not just to follow the letter of the law, but to follow the spirit of the law, because it is possible to follow the letter of the law and still break the rules. Uh, and I think that's not something that we would like to do. Um, it is more, um, I think, appropriate for us to follow the spirit of the law. And I think that's really what is more important. Um, but as far as other products are concerned, I don't think there's any written down law. But um, the general tendency would be to be uh, responsible, as with any, any product. Or it's not just children I'm talking about, but I think uh, with any adult or man, woman, or child. Um, I don't, as I said earlier, that uh, I don't think any respectable agency would do anything that would harm um, anybody, leave alone children. Uh, do you believe that present day ads will complete and unbiased information? Do you think that the deep round of emotions are of twisted poor thoughts? No, I think, again, you see, what I find is that I think the, the approach to this whole thing is that I think your, your basic uh, uh, belief seems to be that advertising uh, people are out to make a sale at any cost. Now, this is completely untrue. Uh, this is, as I repeatedly say this, that this is a business where the agency is trying to create a relationship between a manufacturer and its customer. You cannot build this relationship without honesty, without truth, um, and without some integrity. What you can do is to uh, fool them once, get them to buy your product. But this is not a relationship uh, which is going to be uh, enduring, uh, and this is not going to be uh, beneficial to our clients in the long run. So um, there is no way. Uh, that, that we can take a short-term view of this and you know, trying to look for quick benefits. Because the whole business of advertising is about building, you know, uh, about bonding, uh, you know, creating uh, a bond between customer and its brand. Do you 
think that advertisers have a social responsibility in a market for that? <laughs> this is a heavy question indeed, yeah. Of course, advertisers have a, uh, have a social responsibility. Um, and I, I don't think because uh, advertising is part of, part of society. It is, it is something which is a reflection of society as well. Uh, but it's really more a chicken and an egg situation, you know, it's a reflection of each other. Um, but I believe that advertising that doesn't uh, reflect what, the society, what is going on in society is likely to succeed. And I think anything that's not likely to succeed is not going to see the light of day. I have yet to meet a consumer um, who will go and throw his or her, her money away. This, you know, um, we in the advertising business, you know, we have enormous respect for the consumer because uh, the consumer is not a fool. The consumer is a very, very smart person. The consumer has also a lot, a lot of options of how to spend that money that they have. And there seems to be a kind of uh, belief somewhere that advertising agency had have the power to make the consumer do anything. I wish it was true, but it's just not true. You know, um, advertising can only uh, sometimes appeal to their um, emotional kind of, uh, uh, you know, make a, or have an emotional appeal or it may have a kind of thing. But at the end of the day, it has to make sense to the consumer somehow, you know. But this whole business of mindless expenditure is something that, I mean, uh, you know, I, d I don't think it's possible. Even if you wanted to do it, you couldn't. Do you think that dream merchants, you people, are pushing up aspiration levels in our society, in a disparate society, where my way is, you know, a huge body of poor people, small body of uh, urban, rich, upper class. Do you think that uh, you causing uh, tension or social frustration or building up social tension? No, I think aspirations are, I mean, different people at different, um, you know, at different, uh, with different income groups, uh, different people living in cities and villages. I think different people have different aspirations. Uh, your aspirations may be different from mine and my aspirations might be different from somebody else's. Um, I think it's a good thing. Um, to make people aspire for a better life, um, because if this didn't happen, we'd still be living in caves. You know, it's only because people want a better life, they want to improve their lot, they want a better home, they want a better car or better whatever it is. This is what makes them work harder. Uh, this is what makes them uh, do whatever they want. Uh, to um, and I think ultimately the the benefit really that's how countries and uh, you know and societies benefit. Um, because if you didn't aspire for a better life, um, as I said that, you know, I don't think there's any hope either for the individual or for the society or for the country. Yeah,